Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, January 17th, and this is the Chaos DEI Working Group, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Working Group. I'm Elizabeth, I'm the Chaos Community Manager, even though my thing does not say that, that's who I am. So it's great to see everybody here. Um, great to see a couple new faces. Welcome, Nigel, glad, glad to have you here. I'm glad you made it today. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Let me share my stuff. Minutes are in the chat, and as always, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind as you interact with us today. Um, if you want your camera off, totally fine. Just want to reinforce that every time. Um, you're welcome to chat in the uh, the chat on the side. It's to the side for me. I don't know where, where it is for everybody else. but um, And then if you do need the minutes, just, just give a shout in the chat, and we'll be happy to drop that in there for you. Feel free to add your name to the agenda um, as an attendee if you like. See how you're doing today. How is everybody? Seems like it's cold for a lot of people still, but Lamy's energized. So, yes, I love it. <laughs> I'm a little bit energized. I'm on my second cup, so I'll be more energized when it's finished. Uh, yeah, okay. So the first thing I put on here was the DEI project badging, which is super exciting and it's so close. <laughs> it's so close. I feel like, yeah, yeah, we all need to, I don't know what. I think it's done, honestly. It, so I think, I don't know if Daniel's on right now, but he went through from like, remember how we had that little issue with the GitLab? He's yeah. like, it's all good. And then we figured out the weird problem you were having. Yeah. On Monday. <laughs> so I think we're all good. So really, I think um, so I think we're still planning on what Monday or are we going to try Friday? Let's just do Monday. That's cool. I agree. I think Thank Enoch you. finished off a couple pull requests last night as well. OK. So for those who haven't seen this, um, this is well, here, I'll just go there. It's just badging dot chaos. Chaos community. So this is what we're releasing on Monday. Um, we've been doing event badging for quite a while. We are now expanding into projects. So this is kind of a big deal for us. Um, yeah, so we're super excited. And for those who don't know, it does center around this DEI.md file, um, which you can read all about it. I'll drop this in, I'll just drop this in the chat if people want to poke around this website. Um, so essentially a project, an open source project will create a DEI.md file that will attend to four chaos metrics. And then a, um, they will apply for a badge. And um, they will then, if it will scan, make sure that we have the proper headers in that file and then issue a badge through email as a TLDR for it. So we've got together, um, thank you for dropping that in there. Um, I, I put this in here because I, I'll probably be the one that answers most of the questions, um, but I'm one person. So <laughs> if, if people could just do me a favor, I mentioned this in the community meeting as well, just help me monitor these um, mentions for chaos in any of these um, social media. If people have questions, comments, feedback, that would be super helpful. You don't necessarily have to be the one to interact with that person, but um, just let us know. Um, I, I see here. A, Go uh, ahead. Yeah. So if you so if um, like I'm I'm one of the LinkedIn Chaos account holders, mm -hmm. and I can log in to LinkedIn, and there's an activity button over on the left, and I can actually see everything that has been talked about with respect to chaos it's just a really convenient way to yeah. see everything yeah that is tagged chaos or like you know reposted or anything like that and i'm wondering if maybe we could do something like ask somebody to log in to just give them access to linkedin and ask them to as an example log in to linkedin every day or every two days and just do a quick scan of the threads yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, yeah. We could give a way for a person to just get involved a little bit. I yeah. don't think it's super complex. 
I, I would also recommend maybe the same person just have access to all of these and just kind of be our, our like social media they just, kind of monitor. What do you think? Yeah, that'd be fine. And they just look. And if there is an issue, like they can just grab the URL and send yeah. it to Slack. What do we all think about that? Don't everybody talk at once. That's like a plan. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take my glove off. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Do we have anybody on this call or do, do you have someone in mind already, Matt? Do we have anybody on this call that might be interested in that? Um, I, I would like to recommend someone. Go for it, yeah. Yeah, oh, she, she handles the Chaos Africa social media platform so I think she's a great fit. Who is it? Aluchi. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I will reach out. And it might actually be great if we could have two people. So um just to have better time zone coverage. So if we have somebody from, from kind of the chaos Africa side, maybe we have somebody more U S West coast to cover a bit more, just have a bit more time zone coverage. It's a great idea. It's a great plan. Do we have anybody over here that wants to try to do this? That's closer or like this side of the world, I guess. We can also ask um, or think of, we can, I can think of a few people to ask about that. So, okay. I think that's a really good idea. I do think. They would have to have, you know, admin access to all of these platforms to see the. Yeah. Uh, at least LinkedIn. Yeah. So it had to be somebody who's made, probably. So it's, yeah, yeah, just so it's a little bit more convenient to see everything all in yeah. one place. That is a really good point, Matt. I hadn't really considered that. So yeah, I think that's great. And we'll just have to trust that. I'm sure they, they'll be fine. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> I was gonna say that we do, we do just need to be careful who we give access to things like like this no. because it could go horribly sideways. But right. I think you know somebody like Aluji who we trust to do the Chaos yeah. Africa stuff sounds like a perfect fit. But we we just need to make sure that this is someone we can trust with the <laughs> I, I have a I have a funny story. I don't know if I should say this on on a recorded <laughs> line, but um yeah, when I started at GitHub. Anybody, every every single employee had access to the Twitter account and you could tweet from Slack. Anybody, anybody, you didn't have to go through anything. You could just tweet on the GitHub. Like what? <laughs> so trusting. And I, anybody could deploy, <laughs> anybody could do anything. That sounds Slack. awesome. Like what could possibly go wrong? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway. Daniel, Daniel you got your hand up. Yeah. I see. Uh, thanks. Yeah, question. Um, the I thought the date for and the announcement was going to be the 26th, but I, before you said Monday, did that change? Well, we're just kind of all over the place <laughs> on the date. It could be the 26th. That's fine. Because <laughs> I know we were trying to light it up with the GitHub or I'm sorry, the GitLab. The GitLab. Yep. Yeah, the let's other, do it the 26th. The other thing I want to point out is we did discover a sort of a bug on the GitLab application where we don't have pagination in the search results coming up. Um, so if you're a project owner and you have multiple repositories, um, you might not be able to find your project to submit the file and we can't, and there's not exact match prioritization either. So we're trying to add that in. Um, but I don't know how long that might take. So I just want to see how much time okay. we have to pull that off because our, our own owner of the GitLab project went mm -hmm. to submit the application mm -hmm. and couldn't because, uh, they had too many other ownership uh, repository ownerships and they had to uh tell me that they couldn't actually find the GitLab main project on the chaos badging site so we got to make a little fix there to sort that out sounds like the 26th is a much better date yeah, <laughs> yeah it, i i just 
that has been a little wonky. It, <clears throat> I think there's a delay in the search that, so when they try it on a small scale, it works fine. And when they try it on a large scale on the public instance, sometimes if there are like a large number of repos that a person controls, it does get wonky. I've had that experience myself because I also have a large number of repos that I'm a maintainer for. So I know the problem you're speaking of. And um, <clears throat> uh, I will, I'll, I'll let, I'll let, I guess, I think that's something that um, Kingsley's working on. Is that right? Well, it sounds like Daniel has some folks from GitLab. Oh, okay. This particular <clears throat> are you are you doing the fix, Daniel? Did I misunderstand? Yeah, Marco's looking into it right now, but maybe I'll okay. I'll, we're, I'll maybe I'll make a, a thread on the Chaos Slack too, just to sync you all up as well, just so everyone's kind of aware. Um, in case yeah, if you can fix ideas. it. That that's great, but I believe it has to do with this the performance of the inbox search and how that up, ends up appearing to the end user. Okay, yeah. So um, yeah, if we have a, a little more time, mm -hmm. that extra week to try to sort that out, that would definitely be, be helpful and not as let's, stressful. Let's use, let's use that then. All good. <laughs> we, we got all the time in the world, Daniel. So it's good. Yeah, it's totally fine. Um, is there an issue open about it? Do we need to open one? Uh, I can see we, about opening an issue on the repo there. Just just so we keep track of it, that's all. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm thinking of, so it doesn't get lost. And I have one other question related to this site too. Um, do we have an ETA on the um, for self-hosted projects for the Google form to go live on the site? Hi, it's, it's Ruth on. Ruth is on. Oh my, I, I didn't realize I was on mute and I was typing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry, um, Daniel, what was the question? Um, I know we had the Google form uh, created for self-hosted projects. And we talked about adding that to the get, I think that to the get started page for applying. Yes, um, yes. I just didn't, uh, is it? There's an issue open for that and will be sorted out this week. So we'll add the, the button there and then they can fill the form. Great, thanks for the update. Cool. Anything else that we want to mention? Um, I see that somebody put here future badges a thought. Was that you, yeah, Matt? It was. So, yeah, all good on on this release. You know, just kind of looking out into the future, we had talked about you know silver badge, a gold badge, a platinum badge, that kind of stuff, and the idea with a silver badge was that we would add two more metrics. So it would be a total of six that folks reflect on and then so on and so forth down, down to the platinum badge. I did wonder, so um, right now the bronze badge is four particular metrics that you really need to attend to. And as we add, get to six, would we want to, if, um, let's see, how do I say this? Like in the future, could a bronze badge do four of the six, any four of the six? And if we did gold that had eight metrics, could silver do any six of the eight that are at the gold stage? Because if we just keep adding two and we make people always do those two and then the next two, like it's just a little less restrictive. Does that make sense? I like that idea. So if if, our, if, four, if our, four out of six gets you bronze, correct. Four out of eight gets you bronze, and correct. so on and so forth. Yep, and you pick just because the DEI.md file is going to get bigger over time. Like I don't want to have a a bronze DEI.md file or a silver.dei.md file or a gold.dei.md file. I just want to have one. And as we expand over time, we could template it that says, you know, you must have these four for bronze and then these two additional for silver. We could set it up that way, or we could just list all of the metrics as we add them to the DEI and say, you for bronze, you just need to pick four out of these, whichever the yeah. parts that you're working on. We've, the, the point I'm about to make, we've discussed before, but at some level of badging, I think the project 
will need to show that they've actually advanced in their inclusion, which would mean that, for example, if a project starts with three maintainers and contributors, you know, at some level, they can't continue to badge if all they still have is three maintainers and contributors. Like there's a some point at which continuing to level up requires some demonstration that they're including more people. <clears throat> so like for, for bronze and silver, I think adding metrics, as you describe, is pretty good. But as we go to gold and platinum at some point, I think for the badge to have any credibility that the actual level of inclusion needs to be considered. I, I think that's a that's a really interesting point, Sean. I I wonder how we would ever even measure that on some well, we of, can always we can always see how many people are contributing. I mean that, but also uh yeah, I don't know. Um, like how would you how would you say like you have to increase your contributor base by 10 percent or like i feel like that is yeah gonna... <clears throat> yeah i don't want it to become stupidly metrics driven which just drives the behavior of you know getting people yeah. engaged for no reason yeah. um <clears throat> i also think i also think it really undermines the credibility of the badge if like we have a platinum level project that has the same three contributors that were there at the bronze level well, I think if they're like, doing platinum, so like the idea is that they have thought about 10 things and this is how they're attending it. And the hope is that those 10 things would naturally organically drive their community growth. But yeah. like, even if it is a small community, I think it's okay. I think it's okay if they've, if they've still thought about 10 things and they've still implemented processes, even if they have 10 people. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I I I don't I, I think I think it does put the credibility of the badge somewhat at risk. However, to your point, uh, you know, look if they've actually attended to these things and given them some thought, that's better than zero. And maybe right. they're just terrible at marketing. Well, and that that's true. And then um, what Matt just put in there is that one of the things could be contributor engagement or contributor growth. Maybe like maybe that's a thing we look at yeah. as one of the metrics. Yeah. Fair. And just how they're thinking about that. So, and Matt, okay. to your point about the, um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, to your point earlier about the four of eight, to be fair, that's how event badging works. So we don't require anything. It's just how many of these things have you thought about? Are you able to do? Because some people aren't okay. able to do all the things. So um, okay. I think that's a great idea. Okay. I think, Kevin, did you have a comment too? I saw you unmute for a second. Ne never mind. I'm fine. Okay, yeah, definitely not need to sort it out now. Just a thought that I had this morning. And then if there are anything in there that we we as a community feel are absolutely crucial, then we could maybe require that. Like in, in event badging, the code of conduct is required. Right. Like hands down, you can do you can do everything else or nothing else, but the the code of conduct is absolutely required. Sure. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, we did do a, a Q and A for answers. Um, I tried to fill some stuff in, but if people want to look at this and they have comments or recommendations on how we could reword things, happy to have those in there. What this is for folks is a. Um, like a standard response to questions that we maybe expect to get just so we're not answering questions differently in different channels or to different people in different ways. And the bank of Q and A that you see here is just a starter because there may be questions that we get that we don't expect, but we could add it to this list. It's, I think we talked about this in the community call and I had mentioned sometimes when I am doing a class, I, I get the same question over and over and over again. And so I just put together a standard announcement response for everybody because clearly this is a question that everybody has. So that's kind of what this is here. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. 
Um, we also do have this is just about ready, I think. So whenever we're ready to to ship it, um, we're working on this stuff. So again, if you have thoughts or um, comments on this public blog, happy to have those as well. And we did talk in the community call about pointing people to the newcomer hangout, which happens every Tuesday. Um, just this is an open kind of forum, open office hours kind of thing. Um, we also have the badging repo if people want to open an issue, and then also the badging Slack if people do want to join our Slack and, and be more engaged that way. Do we think that's okay? Having kind of, I mean, it kind of spreads stuff out a little bit instead of pointing people all to the same funnel, but it also allows for a little bit uh, easier, <laughs> easier uh, way for people to engage the way they want. Yeah, this is good. All right, any final stuff on badging before I move on to something completely different? All good for me. All right, so um, I, I brought this up. Uh, this has been on my mind forever and I've had so many thoughts about it and I'm tired of thinking about it and I wanna take some action. Um, particularly, it was driven by um, a comment that I heard um, I mean, I already wanted to take action, but then I heard this comment and it even solidified it more for me that one of our community members was uh, hoping to, or someone wanted to um, nominate them for the Google's, Google Open Source Peer Award. And they had not much to show because a lot of their contributions are other than code. And that is a real shame because this person is extremely, um, extremely engaged in our community and is a huge contributor to our community, but it doesn't show up anywhere. I don't like that. And I want to fix that. So um, yeah, I think that we um, want to try something and it's not perfect, of course, but it might be a start. So I envision a uh, con community contribu contributions folder in our community repo. Um, and then each project or however we want to do it would have a markdown file. So it would look something like this. And then every time someone did do something in the community, whether it be um, helped out with an event, whether it be facilitated a meeting, worked on documentation in something in a Google Doc that doesn't show up in GitHub, anything that doesn't show up as a PR, um, they could just put a PR in for their contribution. Um, and then it would show up on their green, because they like the green contribution graph is the thing that people look at. And so we're trying to just surface those kind of contributions a little bit better. What do we think? I was hoping Daniel had a comment. Yeah, Daniel, go for it. Uh, yeah, this is a big area that we work on uh, for contributor success at GitLab um, because we really want to improve our efforts to recognize non-code contributions. So we have been trying to start tracking like issues and um, comments in, you know, whether it's a merge request or an issue, just kind of adding something that adds to the discussion, even adding ideas, feedback, um, and also trying to do more to recognize participation in our like forum and our Discord community too, just to, you know, give some extra recognition to the people who are helping the open source community at large, not just making code contributions. So I, I think this is a great idea, Elizabeth. Um, I think it's really important to recognize contributors um, beyond just code contributions. And, and it is hard to do that on either GitHub or GitLab to kind of track those um, on a platform. So it sounds like a, a good step in the right direction to me. That's awesome to hear, Daniel. Um, it isn't perfect because it does require somebody to kind of self self add them themselves. <laughs> so, um, you know, people might forget or they don't, you know, feel like their contribution was enough to warrant, uh, you know, a comment, but um, that's something I think we can overcome. And at least this is a start. It's just like we do in chaos is just try to move us off zero. Like, let's just start something and see how it goes and experiment with it a little bit. So it sounds like um, people in chat also like it. Um, are there any concerns about this? But I don't have any concerns, but I, I think that it, um, I think it might help if there are a few of us or a group of people who are 
regularly encouraging people to add themselves for things. So, you know, hey, you know, hey, Elizabeth, you did this great thing. You should add yourself. Here's here's the link where you should add yourself. Um, and maybe that will help get people over this hump of, you know, is, is my thing important enough to be added to the, the list? It's a great comment, Don, and I totally agree. Because I would okay. really, oh, sorry, Amy, go ahead. I, I was trying to type and I wasn't doing a really good job. Um, in OpenStack, what we have similar with the PRs is we have technical contributors. But then for the people who lead meetings and don't have PRs and don't really do technical work, the more technical leaders then nominate them for extra active contributor. So we still get them in, but we put it on the leadership. So I kind of like the idea of, you know, going, hey, that was really something good. Why don't you put in this PR being that it's all PR based and we need them to actually do the PR. Your font is so tiny. Yeah, I think it's because I, I know. <laughs> you know, all like, yeah, fix that, Matt. Really, thank you. <laughs> it was bothering me as well, so I was gonna go back and do it later. But I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate your attentiveness to uh, the hey, fonts. <laughs> yeah, the fonts. Um. Okay. Awesome. I, I had a comment. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know how you want to distribute this or what you had in mind, but maybe just have a single document in the community repo where we point people to and the columns would be like username, task completed. I don't know, like maybe that's the all you um, I'm jumping back here, but the only challenge with a single document is for a project this large, I think that could become unwieldy really fast. Because she's each row is a particular task completed. <clears throat> so it's not a row per person; it's a row per task, right, Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My concern was actually the unwieldiness the other way, Sean. Yeah, if we, yeah. If we put these into every repository, then it just becomes, or the repo any any select set of repositories. I don't know. Just. Yeah, and I recommend consolidating it in a single repository for now. If it becomes unwieldy because it becomes so incredibly popular, then that will give us a better feel for where else we might need to create these. But I think if we if we create too many of them, then it'll be hard and it may not it may never get traction. So agree. That's I would, a good I would point. start small and focused, see where it gets traction, and then decide what we need to do with it. It's always easier really to expand point. things than to bring things back in. Fair, very That's good. Fair. Yeah, I was envisioning all of them happening in the community repo in one folder, just different docs. But to your point, then it's kind of distributed. And if you're working for more than one project, like which one do you put it in? And it just becomes a little bit more confusing. So maybe to start, we have one doc, super simple, add your name. And then if like it, to Sean, to your point, I agree, it could get unwieldy pretty quickly if we have a lot of those contributions, um, which will be an interesting experiment to see how many how many of these contributions we are, we're getting and we don't even know about. So yeah, um, let's try it. Awesome. Thanks everybody. My, my other question would be, would we ever say no to a PR? And if so, why? Good like, question. Somebody, yeah, somebody, you get the yeah, idea. If it's, junk, if it's junk, I mean, it should be, junk is pretty easily recognized. Yeah, but like, um, like, sure. I mean, if it's absolute, like, yeah, not understandable. But like, um, attended a meeting. Yeah, does that count? Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of does because you know that's somebody showing up and spending an hour with us that they could be doing literally anything else. But then we're really good. It's really going to be huge. <laughs> If we do that for every meeting it came us, we'll have, yeah, it will be unwieldy. Part, yeah, my first I feel thought like is we have attendees, attendees are listed in the meeting notes. I feel like it, I feel like the bar has to be higher than attending a meeting. And Matt is right. We should specify where this bar is um, yeah. before we roll this out. I think like what, 
what is the, the level of something that you've done? What do others think about that? Especially those who have um, not spoken up yet. I would really like to hear your kind of input. Okay. That's a good question, Sean. I don't know enough about GitHub Actions, but we could look at that for sure. Let a meeting. We also like you get the log of the meeting, you mail it out to the mailing list. You do have to do a PR to a web page usually, but if you forget to do it, someone else will catch it up as long as you led a meeting will count it so it's really some kind of action that you've taken yes so like a, a more than just yeah at the minimum it's you start the log end of the log and send an email of the log yeah so i'm thinking like there's also been folks who have shown up uh, like the newcomer hangout just to help answer questions and things like that. And I, I would count that like that's an hour out of the day that you give into chaos to just be available and answer questions and welcome newcomers in. So I would I would count that attendance because it is a little bit more interactive and a little bit more engaged and it's a much smaller group. Um, what do we think? I don't I agree. Why don't we um, maybe just make a, a quick doc as to what some examples could be. Yeah. We'll never capture everything, that's for sure. Um, honestly, this reminds me of reviewing tenure and promotion packets <laughs> at a <Yeah>. university. <laughs> so there's like clear things that count and clear things that don't count. And then there's a there you always hit this in-between space. Yeah. Like, helping people through that is never clear. Um Yes. Do, do my retweets count towards tenure and promotion? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll let, can I add uh, I'm, I'm in, in the camp that's really in favor of, of recognizing everything. Um, and I, I, at GitLab, we recognize typo contributions just as much as mass code contributions. And when we do like our MVP nomination, we would highlight someone that's attended office hour meetings or just you know, any, any little tiny thing is still highlighted. I, I think just for from an inclusion standpoint, it's nice for people who are brand new to join your community. To just feel like any little thing they, they do is, you know, it's still something. Uh, is valuable, yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know if there is a downside here to other than having a longer document. Um, maybe there's a way of sorting that out, but I would be on the side of having more not too high. Because a lot of us, when we join our open source community, it's really intimidating to think that we've done any sort of contribution at all. So I think, at least for myself, I've always been very shy to say, like, oh, I actually accomplished something. I'm more inclined to say, no, oh, it's not good enough, right? So I know there's a lot of people like that out there. So having the bar too high could be a little intimidating to add your, your name to a list like this. And that's fair and, and super valid. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, to be fair, like attending a meeting again, you know, you are giving an hour of your time to chaos, whether or not you're, you know, actively speaking up or putting stuff in chat or whatever, like you're still here. And those are the folks that when we look at who is the higher, higher level of engagement, like we look at attendance and we do look at see who who regularly attends meetings. So maybe we do something like attended five meetings or something like we lump it a little bit to just like make it. I don't know. What do you all think? Or maybe I, I tend to, I tend to think like Daniel that recognizing everything and not having a, a bar, you know, so long as it's legitimate. Um, <clears throat> and I did ask the question about uh, GitLab and GitHub action type things um, in the software channel. Okay, thanks, Sean. How, how about we do this? How about we start with no no bar, like any kind of contribution. If you feel like you've made a contribution to chaos, then you've made a contribution to chaos and there is no bar. 
and we see how it goes. And if we find that we're just getting like, you know, oh, I was in Slack today, but I didn't say anything or I don't know. Yeah. Things that maybe could could be a little more engaged. Yeah. Engagement versus contribution. Yeah. What do we think? We'll just start and see how it goes. Yeah, we could. Right. To Don's point, we can always mm. back off. <laughs> True. If like every day you wake up to, you know, <laughs> 750 PRs. <laughs> <laughs> they're all merge conflicts because they're all trying to add their names to the same doc. And it's like, okay, cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then we will adjust. We will shift and adjust. <laughs> it might, you know, it might be good to seed this with some things that we think are are really good contributions. So maybe before we announce this on the uh, wherever you're going to announce it, um, maybe maybe you reach out to some people who've done some things and and let's get a list of maybe like 10, 10 activities, ten things that people have done, and that. Um, because setting the tone and setting the expectations, I think, or, or setting, setting the tone by having some stuff there when people look at it the first time, uh, really helps set expectations, um, even if we're not doing it explicitly. We could also, I'm just throwing this idea out there. I don't really have strong feelings about it, but we could also have, um, a, not a, I don't think you can do a drop down, but something similar where it would have to fall into a category. So like then we have set categories of like led a meeting or um, worked on a metric or what like whatever we want. And then th that person would just pick whichever one makes sense for their contribution. I don't think we could do drop downs in Markdown, can we? You could do a lot of things that you wouldn't think you can do <clears throat> um, with categories. We might, it might be good just to have people create their own category to start with, and then we can consolidate um, over time. So basically use it initially to gather a list of categories. Although there are some sure, surely that we could identify off the top of our heads as well. Not to like box things in, but. Yeah, I, yeah I'm thinking like a qualitative researcher now. <laughs> well, Creature open codes. <laughs> I was thinking about the doc. So like maybe we have a doc for meeting attendance. We have a doc for facilitate, like, I don't know, whatever our categories would be, we would have a separate doc, but that seems a little complicated. One yeah. idea would be um, what would we do for self nominations at GitLab for when a contributor wants swag is we use a Google form and then you can kind of fill out the contribution you made, the date, kind of things like that. Um, and then that's sent to our team. So. We could do something like this where we have a Google form for a lot of the information that we're looking for. And then maybe like once a month, someone adds that in as a PR to the actual project to add the list of names after, instead of like having tons of different PRs come in. Just one idea. That is a good idea. I kind of like having people submit a PR because then they get credit on their green contribute. It counts as a contribution somewhere, but I totally understand what you're saying, Daniel. And I, I like that idea better actually for truly keeping track and having an easy way to export that data out and you know sort and do all the things that markdown is not going to let us do <laughs> you know so <clears throat> that's a good that's a good point mm. okay well we'll think about it a little more um i'll set it up and more thinking no more thinking. You just you started this whole conversation by saying you're done thinking. Right. <laughs> you knew me. I'm doing it. Just do it. Just oh. do it. I just scared the dog. Yeah. Dog. There was there there was a second part of the sentence which was, and now I'm going to start doing. But <laughs> I didn't say it though, did I? I was just you did. You did say it. You did say it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, we have about six minutes left. I just wanted to quickly also remind people about our onboarding courses. We are in the process of scheduling a project manager meeting just to kind of reset and figure out where we are with everything. Um, we didn't have a ton of engagement over the break, which I'm not entirely surprised because eh, 
but um, it would be great to kind of just kickstart this again, because it's definitely we want to get launched sooner than later. Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody that these issues are out there and ready. They're ripe for the taking. 51 of them. So anything you want to you want to look at, you want to do. Yeah, just grab it, assign or or let. I did mine and it was not as hard as I thought it was and it didn't take all that much time. So I would encourage you if you're passionate about any one of these topics to to just again just do it. Yeah. Go with we're going to go with the Nike motto for a while. <laughs> and peculiar and Yiga are on this call as well. Do you all have anything else to add? Not to put you on the spot. No, oh, no I just right here. Got it all. Okay. 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 One more thing to add is that there's a sample already on the repository. Uh, so if you're thinking of doing yours, there's a sample there that uh, on the readme. So you can easily see the sample of everything. So you can just follow suit to do that for yourself. Fantastic. Oh, so good. Awesome. I'll link that too. And well, yeah, in the readme, but oops, I'll just link that again for folks and put that in here. Great. Thank you so much. All right, we have four minutes. Anything else to talk about? Cool. Thanks, everybody. It was a good meeting. I love you all. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you next, next week. Two weeks. Bye. Bye-bye.